Thank you, Guillermo. Uh, what is finite model theory and what is it for? Mathematicians studied finite structures, of course, for a long, long time, but nobody spoke about finite model theory. Consider, for example, Trachtenbrot's theory. theory. It's definitely model theory. It's about finite structures, yet it's not considered FMT usually. Why not? Uh, one argument is that FMT is a part of theoretical computer science. Um, in the very beginning, computer science was had a complex inferiority. You know, if something is called science, doesn't mean it is science. And they try to separate from logicians. Those who are interested in decidability, who are interested in complexity. I have an anecdote from old times. I was on some lecture on computer science, I think at Microsoft. And the guy spoke about something and I asked him, does he know that logicians looked into it? And that the result is known to logicians. He said, yes, I heard about it, but who cares? I say, I do because it's my result. Every, everybody laughed. Okay. I think the official so-called conventional finite model theory starts uh, more or less with uh, Ron's thesis. But Ron can speak for himself, so let me move on. Oops. So the FMT emerged in database theory, which has been the main application and justification for, for a long time. Yes, it is also related to logic and computational complexity. My first paper, arguably relevant, arguably is an important part, was algebras of feasible functions, where I noticed that uh, on finite structures, on our finite domains, primitive recursion is log space computability, and general recursion is polynomial time computability. I write here G51, it refers to article number 51 at my web page. So in whatever improbable case that somebody wants to look further into one of those papers, you have a reference. Oops. Let me see. I apologize. I have very primitive, tiny uh, window machine with me, which I try to operate here. So as far as I'm concerned, the big prompt was a conference Fox 1982 Moshe Wardi presented on decomposition of relational databases where he made essential use of Beth definability theorem. I listened and started to worry whether the theorem actually survives if we restrict attention to finite structures. So I asked him uh, whether his databases may be infinite. He said, yes. Returning home, I checked and discovered that various classical logic theorems like compactness, Beth definability, Craig's interpolation. So most of those famous theorems fail in the finite case. Now, if you look at it, in infinite databases, it's a little expensive. Now you may say, okay, maybe infinite, but say constructive. Nope. Constructive databases do not support the classical logic theorems either. By the way, do you hear me? Hello? Perfect. Yeah, we hear yes, you. Yes. Oh, okay. Great. I just started to worry maybe about talking to myself. We'll, we'll tell okay. you if we don't hear you. <laughs> 
Right. By Trachtenbot's theorem, the set of finitely valid first order formulas is not recursively enumerable. In that sense, there is no logic calculus for finite validity. That led me to toward logics tailored for computational complexity. So if, if you cannot use validity as your guide, then maybe computational complex, complexity can play the role. Okay, then there was a, a lot of fun with uh, um, fin finite model theory. Oh, by the way, I asked Ron, just as, as I, I was preparing this talk, I asked Ron who coined fin the term finite model theory. Ron involved Moshe, Moshe investigated and pointed finger to me. He said that the term first appears in, in one of my papers. And I actually didn't remember coining any term. I certainly didn't coin it consciously, but it's probably natural because contrary to all this serious people coming from databases and doing useful things, I came from logic, uh, mostly from model theory. And so it was model theory of finite structures. Kind of. So I didn't, didn't think I coined term, I just named what seems to be the, the issue at hand. Okay, I will not go through these papers. It will take a long time, oops. Now, later I started to think about, you know, if you really think about databases as, as your main application, are they really finite? So a query may manipulate numbers. So for example, you have some database of salaries and you say, what is the average salary? And you compute and you get a number which didn't appear in database. So, so somehow database involves numbers and not just numbers, but also arithmetical operations. So to account for this, uh, together with Eric Gradel, we introduced so-called metafinite model theory. This metafinite I indeed coined. I actually spent a while thinking about it. It is a metafinite structure. So the example is the main example is database. So there's a primary part, which is a finite. Is finite. And then there is a secondary part, typically infinite. It may be integer arithmetic or real arithmetic. Or... <coughs> Somebody can fell out of the chair. And then there are weight, op weight functions, always only from the primary part to the secondary. So it's very difficult, difficult to get to give you intuition and, and sense what it is. But typical examples are like database which of salaries. Another example maybe something which manipulates, uh, um, say graph, but um, on edges you have weights which are probabilistic probabilities. So you work with probabilities. Quantification is allowed only over the finite, over the primary part, which is finite. And so in this paper we developed, so the main contribution was the, the, the very concept of metafinite structure, but um, being mathematicians, mostly at least by integration, we tried to prove some theorems. And essentially we looked what happens to whatever we know about finite structures, how is it can be adjusted to metafinite and by and large the answer is yes. So, though some cases become involved, sometimes you can adjust, but not in a single way. No, it's a involved story. One other issue now getting back to, truly finite, 
another issue which also came from databases. So if you consider records or tuples, kind of rows of data in, in, in databases, they are not ordered. And that creates a problem. To understand this problem, consider, suppose you and a friend um, wrote a paper and you decided that nobody will be the first. So how will you write it on, on, um, on a page that no author is first? How, how to do it? Uh, not, it's, it's not, not an easy thing to do. So computers have a similar problem with unordered set of uh, uh, data records. They would just order those records in one way or another. So now suppose I run my query on my computer, which ordered those um, records and algorithm may use this order. And then I ship this um, database to you. Your, your computer stores the records in a different order, and then the query may get different result. So that's a problem. To solve this problem, query languages, the spe special query languages, which syntactically guarantee that queries do not depend on the order of um, records. You cannot just ask, uh, suppose you have a record of boys, a record of girls, and you want to do a matching, you cannot ask um, query, give me the first boy. There's no first boy because there's no order. So many algorithms cannot be implemented as is. You have to think how to do it without referring to the order. See, Chandra in her area asked whether there exists a computation model that captures polynomial time over structures, not necessarily ordered structures. So if a structure is ordered, you really deal with a, with, with a string. So our normal complexity theory is complexity th theory of strings. Now you think complexity theory of structures like uh, a database or say a graph structure and where neither nodes nor a graph where neither nodes are ordered nor uh, the edges. So in, in this article, Logic and the Challenge of Computer Science, uh, Science, I reformulated their question as a question of existence of a logic that captures polynomial time over structures and conjecture that no such logic exists. The question remains open, though some progress was achieved. So Andreas Blas, Aaron Schellach and myself, we developed um, a rather natural and expressive logic, which is often called BGS, Blas Gurevich Shalach, uh, where you can program or describe only those algorithms which, or properties, which do not depend on order. So properties of structures proper um it is rather expressive logic and for a long time until actually even okay i'm running ahead of myself let me see hmm Let's see something is on my screen which interferes. Oh. In 2010, Ben Rossman constructed a polynomial time function. When I say polynomial time, I mean polynomial time on structures. 
a structure really goes from a vector space to its dual. And that even though it's polynomial time, it is not expressible in BGS. So it is the one, the first and example and essentially the only, more or less the only example except Ben has very variations of it. The question whether there exists a polynomial time relation not expressible in BGS is still open, though the answer is almost surely yes, there exists. So when we worked on BGS, we didn't doubt the conjecture that there is no p-time logic for, for um, there is no logic for p-time. Uh, of course, one has to agree what, what logic means. So you put certain natural properties. Uh, nevertheless, one can sort of approximate. You may, you may have a system where all known algorithms are expressible or normal, normal properties. And that's what we try to do. I want you to leave some time for discussion. So thanks, that's it.